Well, I want us to get into, we are in chapter 13 now in the book of Revelation. We got to finish in with chapter 12 the last time. And by the way, I told you there are some details in um, various chapters that I'm going to go through with you again. But um, these details require that you have a clear understanding of the book first. And then we start picking out very important details. So when I say we're done with chapter 12 or we're done with chapter 10 and so on, don't think we won't go back to, to them. There are some important things in them that um, I'd like to point out to you. So, Revelation chapter 13. From verse 1. John writes, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Um, what I just said a moment ago about the GMO food and, and people thinking, what are we going to be eating then if so much is bad? Well, the area of my emphasis tonight will uh, center on helping you answer that question. So let's, let's read verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat, and great authority. I think it was 2021 or so when we showed you this jaguar, this image. What you're seeing there is a leopard with wings of a bird. And that is the mouth of a lion. When you look at the dentation, it is slightly different from the dentation of a, of a leopard. Quite interesting. Very interesting. Now, you know, some people said that, um, well, that was a, a jaguar. Or, uh, you know, in some places they call it jaguar. In some places they call it panther. All right? It's the same animal. So they say, but the Bible says leopard. The actual word used in the Greek is padalis, which is panther. Interesting. But then uh, the leopard is a, is a mixture of a panther and the lioness. So you have leon and pedalis. This way you have a leopard.
But there's, um, there's a lot that's interesting I'm, I'm going to show you here. So this they took to the Rockefeller Center. And of course, also eventually found its place on the grounds of the United Nations. Did we ask them to do this? We didn't, and the Bible described this all the time. But if you read in, in the book of Daniel, when this came out, I, I explained to you, I showed you from the Bible, showed you from the Bible, a clear description of what we had. And the significance of this image. Let's read again of this image. The significance of this image. Now, let's, let's read again. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. We're going to read from verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, or observe the descriptions. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. Man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now, when, remember, this is a vision with a lot of symbolism, like having four heads, which turned out to be that four uh, kings will come out of this particular uh, power that it represented. Okay, I, I don't want to open it up yet. But just, just to let you understand, when you see four wings, uh, four heads, and so on, and then you find that in the image that we presented you didn't have four, well, because you have to recognize the other details that were given in the interpretations. And dominion was given to it. Next. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and devoured and brick in pieces, and stabbed the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. So you see the fourth beast, it says, was different from all the other beasts before it, and it destroyed whatever was before it. And it had ten horns. Okay? Then later on, it tells us, another little horn came up, from here, and he says it destroyed three of the horns among the ten. And this particular horn replaced the fourth beast. So he's dealing with kingdoms, empires. See? And then he's dealing with kings, leaders.
So you go to verse 15, same book, same chapter. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And gave a lot of explanation. But let's go on. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other beasts which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. I want to remark that place. It says, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the angel of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Which means, in Daniel's time, was the first kingdom that he was talking about. So, which are these kingdoms? In Daniel's day, the first kingdom was what? Babylon. The Babylonian king. Of course, he started out as Middle Persia. And that's why he, he tells us how that animal raised itself on one side. The, the bear had raised itself on one side. And then there's another vision in which he explains father. And then the third kingdom was the Grecian kingdom. Now that Grecian kingdom turns out to be what we read of the leopard. Remember, the Babylonian one was the lion. Then the Persian one was the bear. And then the Grecian one, the leopard. And then the fourth kingdom, he says, was different. He couldn't describe the animal. But he told us what it was. And that's the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire comes out with these 10 kings. So let's go back to that verse where we were, the last verse in Daniel chapter 7 that we were reading. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be the verse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. And he shall be the verse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. He calls this one a king. I want you to observe. Okay. He shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Now the Aramaic word that's translated wear, wear out, here, means to harass. Okay? Harass. He will persecute them. He will trouble them. I want to read a little more 
of this over in Revelation. Just hold it. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. To change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. I told you in the book of Daniel, that's the expression for three and a half years. A time, one year. Times, two years. The dividing of time, half. Now, uh, we didn't just, it's not just a conjecture. No, no, no. In several other verses, they are made clear. And that's why we're letting you know what he's talking about here. So they're actually made clear in terms of number of months, uh, a specific number of years, uh, and, and days, actually. Number of days as well. So we're not just um, trying to fix it up. All right. So I, I want to take you now back to the book of Revelation chapter 13 where we were reading. And I stood upon, no, no, no. We, we are over in verse 5, right? We got into verse 5. Yeah. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Notice that other one we just saw. A time and times and dividing of time. And, and, and we just observe here. 40 and 2 months. 42 months. And uh, that is three and a half years. Okay. Now go back to verse, verse 2. Let's read from verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The beast looked like a leopard. I want you to observe what the beast looked like. Now we go back to Daniel and he tells us the one that looked like a lion, the one that looked like a bear, and then the one that looked like a leopard. So it looked like a leopard and it says has the feet of a bear. And that's quite interesting. The feet of a bear. And his, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. But essentially a leopard. You see it? Essentially a leopard. With the feet of a bear. So he's telling you that this is the Grecian Empire returned. With these elements of Persia and Babylon. This is remarkable. And then in 2021, they come out with it. They come out with the symbolism. Why? Because in the spirit, they're saying it's time. It's time. It's time for their idolatry. It's time. Okay. Uh, next verse. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now, go back to verse 2. So you understand the, when he's telling you about the heads. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, remember verse 1. Go to verse 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. So remember, the number of heads. Seven heads. Ten horns. And upon the horns, ten crowns. Which means, these kings... Because the horns are the ones that are crowned. You see it? 
So he's not here telling you about the powers of the seven heads. But the powers of the ten horns. Here they're crowned. But he's telling you their history. Because he says, seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. You see it? Upon his heads. There's something that's consistent. Blasphemy against God because of idolatry. This has been on for so long. But let's keep reading. No, no, no. Let's now go to verse, verse 4. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Remember, he says the dragon gave him his power and great authority. And the, they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast. So they worshiped Satan and they worship the beast. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth. This is the same beast we read of in, in Daniel chapter 7. When we read from verses 25 in, 24 into 25. See, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Look at the next verse. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now, let, let, look, look at that verse one more time. It was given unto him to make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now, can we read it from the Young's translation? You got Young's translation. I want you to just observe some. And there was given to it to make war with the saints. He uses it here because he's still dealing with the beast. Okay. And there was given to it to make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And there was given him, given to it authority over every tribe and tongue and nation. Over every. Now, what you should be thinking about, or what you would be thinking about here, uh, how come... He's got, how come he's got, uh, uh, he, he's got power to make war with the saints and to overcome them? How, how could he? How could he overcome them? Well, you're going to know in a second. Now, go back to where we read of it in, in uh, Daniel. We'll just look at the, the, the two verses. He 
He says, verse 24, chapter 7, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise, shall rise after them, and he shall be the verse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. That is blasphemy. See? We just saw it in, the, in, the, in Revelation. Speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He's going to afflict and harass them. See? He says, power was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. So he will afflict them. He will harass them. Wear out the saints. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand. In Revelation it says 42 months. Here he says the time. And times and the dividing of time. Three and a half years. So. He's going to have power over the saints. What saints are these? How could he have power over the saints? Who are these saints? They are the saints of the tribulation period. These are the saints of that era. And they, they are two groups. The first group we, we read of in uh, uh, chapter 12, and we did talk about it. Now you go back to Revelation chapter 12. From verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman, the sun clothed woman, which brought forth the man child. You remember the man child we talked about? And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. <laughs> There's that expression from Daniel. You see it? A time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Next verse. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he in this area, in this area, he explains the vision that he saw about the sun clothed woman, the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see, they went after the remnant of her seed. Which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, here you see one group, the remnant. And I told you that um, the church is never called remnant in prophetic uh, language. The remnant always refers to the children of Israel, not the church. Always the children of Israel. And then, of course, you can see um, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there's something that is up, he's against there, the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so the Bible tells us that all those who believe in Jesus Christ in that period will also face persecution. They will be persecuted because 
the church, the church would have been raptured before this time. First flight would have taken place. Yes, and everybody else, everyone else that will come to heaven among those believing in Jesus Christ from all the nations. And the Bible tells us it's going to be a large, large congregation. Large congregation for second flight. Large congregation from all the nations. We, we read of that before. We dealt with that. And he tells us um, they're all going to be killed. Nobody's coming there like the, the rapture that we had. No, they're all coming, haven't been slain, haven't been killed. That's the only way they come. That's the only way they come. They come to heaven. So remember, we dealt with that also about the, the souls that were under the altar. The souls that were under the altar. All of them. And then he told them when they, when they cried out for vengeance, he says, wait until others who should be killed like you arrive. So everyone, everyone who will go to heaven, who goes through the, the, the tribulation period, will only get to heaven by death. That's what the Bible says. There's no other way. So I told you, prepare for the rapture of the church. You see, the church will never be given into the hands of the Antichrist. I want you to understand that. The church will never be given into the hands of the Antichrist. It's not going to happen. And I, I'm going to show you a few scriptures just so you understand. And that's why we've got to do what we've got to do. We have to stand up against this satanic characters that are sent out. These are Satan's miseries sent out to the nations. But we are not afraid of them. I'm going to show you scriptures. So let's, let's, let's begin with what happens at the rapture. What the Bible tells us again about the rapture. I've shared some of this with you before, but I want us to look at this. Isaiah chapter 26. We're going to read from verse 19. It says, thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. And this is extraordinary. This is remarkable. I want to I read it to you from the Septuagint. Let's read from the Septuagint. It's, it's much clearer in the Septuagint. The dead shall rise, and they that are in the tombs shall be raised. Did you know this is the, in the Old Testament? The dead shall rise, and they that are in the tombs shall be raised, and they that are in the earth, they that are in the earth shall rejoice. Oh, Lord. It says, for see, the dew from thee is healing to them, but the land of the ungodly shall perish. Now, go to verse 20. Next verse. Go, my people, enter into thy closets, shut thy door, 
hide thyself for a little season until the anger of the Lord have passed away. Did you see that? Yes, sir. Now, go back to King James. I, I wanted you to see verse 19, how it is expressed. He says, come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Now, the indignation refers to the wrath of God, the, the, the period of judgment, which the Bible tells us will take place in those three and a half years. And we read about in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation. But it starts, remember, the whole period is seven years when God returns to dealing with the, the children of Israel in the calendar of God. This will be the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy of 70 weeks. So we are between the 69th week and the 70th week. And these are weeks of years. These are weeks of years, meaning that each week is seven years. So between the 69th week, that includes the, the, the death of the Messiah. And the 70th week, the church comes in. And I told you before, the church has two days. What we just read here is about a re the resurrection of the dead and here he says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Now, at that period, during the, the tribulation period, I told you about the children of Israel fleeing to Adam and Moab. And I showed you scriptures. That will not be their chambers. So he's not telling, he's not talking about them going into their chambers. No. Adam and more will be receiving. That's not their chambers. That will be the time of Jacob's trouble. So that's not a time of rest. is dealing here with the rapture of the church. And because it was a mystery, it could not be understood. These are prophetic mysteries. And that's why Paul came up, he, Paul didn't come up with um, something that prophecy never talked about. Even his ministry to the Gentiles, which he said was also a mystery. Yes, Still, the prophets did mention them because that's where... Uh, uh, in, in Acts chapter 15, when they had this debate, Acts chapter 15, you would see how James, how James dealt with the matter when they were talking about whether or not the Gentiles were supposed to be a part of this whole thing. So even this that was a great mystery, which was given exclusively to Paul, yet there had to be references, prophetic references. So go there and, and see. Acts chapter 15. We're reading from verse 13. Verse 13. 
And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon, referring to Simon Peter, had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to these agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord. So it's amazing how, you know, such a phrase could be, could be overlooked by anybody. But the Holy Ghost knows how to help you see the details. And the Holy Spirit helped James to see the details there and to bring that up to the apostles and leaders. Says that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Hallelujah. So he helped them. He quoted the scripture to show to them that the Gentiles were to be brought in. Blessed be God. Now, this is very important. So, the rapture of the church is imminent, whether, you know, some people like to think about it or not. It is imminent. It's coming. It will happen. Why? Oh, they, they say, it's, it, why, hasn't, why hasn't it happened all this time? Well, what's going on? Well, I'm going to read to you what the Bible says about what you're thinking. Second Peter chapter 3, we're reading from verse 1. Second Peter chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, Knowing this, that they shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. <laughs> Interesting. I I'd like to read this to you from the TLB. Can you please open the TLB? You're going to love how it works. Go to verse, um, verse 3. Let's start from verse 3. TLB. First, I want to remind you that in the last days, there will come scoffers who will do every wrong they can think of and laugh at the truth. This will be their line of argument. So Jesus promised to come back, did he? Then where is he? He'll never come. Why, as far back as anyone can remember, everything has remained exactly as it was since the first day of the creation. <laughs> See, ignorant. So I want you to go to verse eight. We'll read two verses there, verse eight. And, but don't forget this, dear friends, that a day or a thousand years from now is like tomorrow to the Lord. <laughs> but I, I want you to read that. I want you to read that from the King James because... Um, Remember, the living Bible is not really a, a, a translation. It's paraphrased. It's paraphrased. So, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Here's the translation now. And this is significant, I told you before. When he tells you in this way and gives, gives you the same thing in reverse, he's telling you that um, these are no exaggerations or generic communications. Like just, that's not what he's telling you. He's telling you that a thousand years, he's telling you that in prophetic, 
prophetic language a day is a thousand years a thousand years as one day and the way to know whether or not at such times when you read prophetic writing whether he's dealing with such an expression or not will be based on the context in the subject very important the context and the subject what is the subject what is the subject for example for example when he says as uh, that Jonah was in the belly of the fish okay and then he tells you that this Jesus said this would be like he being in the grave okay now we know that he was there three days now you can't you, you can't look at that and say would that mean something like three thousand you know would that mean something like three thousand of course couldn't be because jonah for sure was not in the belly of the fish for three thousand years yes, sir. You know, so you look at the subject, you look at the context, right? Okay, back to where we were. He says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that, the, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Look at verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is remarkable. He says, the reason for the delay is not because God is really delaying, but because he is long suffering toward us. It's got to do with us, not himself. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh, dear. How gracious the Lord is. Now go to verse 15. In account, he wants to account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. He just said it. You see it? He says, The Lord is long suffering to us words, not willing that any should perish. He reemphasizes it in the 15th verse. In account, he says, account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, had written on to you. Next verse. This is remarkable. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in the which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So he tells us about this thing having to do with salvation, why the Lord hasn't come yet. It's got something to do with salvation. He delays because of salvation. And it tells us that Paul had written concerning these things. So I want to show you one of those things that Paul talked about that's consistent with what he just said. Romans chapter 11. Just for contextual analysis, I'd like us to read from verse um, 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Now remember, he's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Okay? The Jews on the one hand and the Gentiles on the other hand. Okay. Now look at verse 24. 
For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, I don't want you to, you can read this for yourself later on. I, I, I'm just trying to get you into an area, okay? It's a long discussion. Better to start from verse 1 if you want to understand the details. But I'm just taking you into uh, a little area here that's um, dealing with what Paul, uh, what Peter just told us, Okay? And it's in verse 25. Look at this. For I will not, brethren, that you, you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Wow. Wow. So, the blind about salvation right now, that means as a nation, not individuals, because there are many individuals who are receiving salvation in Christ Jesus. Right from, right from the day of Pentecost, many began to believe. Don't forget. And in fact, all the apostles were Jews. So always remember that. So there's lots and lots of them. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, multitudes turned to the Lord. Multitudes of men and women. Multitudes. But not as a nation. Not as a nation. The whole nation never did accept. But they will, the Bible says. They will. As a nation, they will. Uh, look at that. He says blindness in part. So it's not total blindness. It's in part. That's what I mean. So many don't believe. As a nation, they don't believe. But there are many that do believe. Yes, sir. So blindness in part has happened to Israel yes. until the fullness of the Gentiles becoming. Who, who was it talking about? Go to the book of, uh, no, 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 go to the AMPC. Let's read the same verse, the same verse, Romans eleven twenty five, 25, on the AMPC. I want you to see. Lest ye be self-opinionated, wise in your own conscience, I do not want you to miss this hidden truth and mystery, brethren. A hardening insensibility has temporarily befallen a part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in until a full number, the full number, until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. There is a full number that God's waiting for us to get to. There's a full number of sinners throughout the world that must come to Jesus Christ. There is a definite number of people that must believe in Jesus Christ. That's what he's waiting for. Once that full number is attained, the trumpet will sound. There it is. It's right in the book. The full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles. Oh, glory be to God. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting till we win the souls that we're supposed to win. He is waiting. Who knows when that last man believes? When is it going to be? And we're preaching the gospel around the world. And, you know, we're doing a big time. It's happening everywhere. Remember, just, uh, was it a couple of years ago, 2022, something like that? When I told you, we got to reach 7 billion people around the world. And I told you by the Spirit, 7 billion. 7 billion. Got to reach got to win them. We've got to gather them. Look at, look, at, look at the number. Not just reaching them. We're reaching that now. We're reaching that number. 
But we've got to now disciple that number. We've got to get them right in. Not just for them to hear, but for us to bring them in. They have to be born again. Not just haven't heard. I believe we've reached that number as far as hearing is concerned. And even exceeded it. But we have to now have them believe. You see, they've got to hear the gospel and accept it and receive it. Because, look at it, look at it again. Look at that verse again. He says, A hardening insensibility has temporarily befallen a part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. This is more than hearing the gospel. It's an ingathering. We have to bring them. The harvest. We're talking about the harvest. Glory be to God. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! You know, if you're a farmer, the most exciting time of a farmer's life is the harvest time. So these are exciting times. As we're winning souls, it's so easy to win souls right now. See, this is the day. This is the day. If you will just open your mouth, the Holy Ghost will put words in your mouth. And the power of God will be distributed from you to your listeners. They will hear the word. They will believe. They will believe. This is the day for winning souls. You have to win souls. You have to. You have to. You have to. The in-gathering. The in-gathering is taking place. It's happening. It's happening big time. It's happening fast. It's happening fast. It's happening fast. Oh. Whew. He said, I'll show you a mystery. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He says, everybody's not going to die. Because you see, we read that scripture. We read that scripture in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19. All right. And he's telling you, this is, thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. All right? Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs. And the earth shall cast out the dead. The earth shall cast out the dead. They're going to come out of the earth. The earth shall cast out the dead. What? Doesn't matter where they are. They'll come out. Yes, sir. Pop out from wherever they are. The earth shall cast out the dead. <laughs> so he tells us, we shall not all die. Everybody's not going to die. You know, some people say, everyone's going to die. I wonder, where did they get it from? Why do they think like that? Who, who? Who got them to reason like that? How did they come about that? They say everybody's going to die. Everybody's going to die. Everybody. But the Bible says everybody's not going to die. Look at it right there. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. You want to read it from the NIV? And then they, they, they amplify it as well. It says, take notice. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose of counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed, transformed, 
forms. That's lovely. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So go back to that King James and, and look at it. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Look at the next verse. In a moment, it's going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, as fast you can, as fast you can, just, how fast can you, can you twinkle your eye? How fast? That was fast, right? Very fast. <laughs> Very fast. Very fast. See? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, I told you, it means second trump. I showed it to you from the Bible. It means second trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. The trumpet shall sound. That is going to be powerful. Yes, sir. In a moment. It's going to happen suddenly. Some people will be in a taxi cab, in a bus, in a train, driving their cars, on a plane, walking in the street, shopping. Delivering a baby. <laughs> Whatever. But suddenly. Now let's see the description. Go to first, first Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. He says, concerning God's people that have passed on, who have died. Okay? It's, he, he uses the term asleep. Like when Jesus said, Lazarus, Lazarus sleepeth. And they said, Master, that's fine if he's sleeping. He said, I want to go and wake him up. I said, Master, you don't need to wake him up. If he's sleeping, that's fine. Then the master said, I mean, he's dead. <laughs> then they said, okay, let's go and die with him. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, not that, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which, uh, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's significant. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. <laughs> what a shout. He'll descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. See it now? Yes, sir. The dead in Christ shall rise first. I told you there's two trumpets. The first trumpet sounds and it's the dead in Christ who hear that. They rise. The second trumpet follows. And that second one is the last one. There's not going to be a third one, brother. Look. Next verse. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. 
in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. Did you see that? He says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Doesn't mean he's going to have a touchdown. No touchdown. He descends from heaven and remains up there. <laughs> it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to meet him in the air. He'll descend from heaven but wait in the air. Yes, sir. Then we get out of this place. Yes, sir. And all this will happen in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Yes, sir. We are suddenly transformed. And this body ceases to be terrestrial. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You see, it's terrestrial right now. That's why we're standing here. That's why we're sitting here. But suddenly it becomes celestial. And once celestialized, we are gone out of here. Yes, sir. Gone. 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 Then Times of London headlines, they are gone. New York Times, they are gone. <laughs> I don't know who are those that will be on the screen on those days. For news. Is it Fox News? Is it CNN? Is it whatever? All of them will be looking for answers. And suddenly they will form one media house. All of them will form one media house. All of them. Global News Network. <laughs> GNN. They need answers. Because some are saying, where have they disappeared to? Where did they disappear to? Because they didn't see us going gradually. It was in a moment, so fast, yes, sir. and we will leave all the trinkets behind. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they can use all the credit cards if they want to. Everything. We have no need of them. Any money that wasn't used for the gospel at that time. Ah. All the extra XPs. Church buildings. Yes, sir. All those things. Gone. We're gone. We're gone. Yes. Gone out of this world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this will happen. Yes. It's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. There are areas I thought I would get into today, but I'll wait till tomorrow. But this one is going to happen soon. Yes, sir. So wherever you are, I want you to pray right now. I want you to talk to the Lord right now. Just pray. Pray. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Remember, this is the month of intercession. And it's important that we pray. 
Go ahead and pray for the nations. Pray that the gospel will have free course in every nation. That the gospel be glorified. In all nations. So la makasi la brakose tequila brakose tequila makakas. Kondelira das ko shapa karamanda. Kizobar. Let's go, Shalamantik. 